we also said that we could move the electrons in this double bond to put another lone pair on that oxygen. So hey, let's try that possibility now, okay? So hey, let me erase this really bad resonance structure and let's draw the other possibility now. So what I'm gonna do is use a curved arrow to take these electrons in this double bond and move them onto the oxygen as a lone pair, okay? So hey, let me go ahead and do that. Draw a curved arrow from this double bond onto this oxygen, okay? And this is showing that the two electrons in this bond shifted up to form a lone pair on the oxygen. Remember you guys, this line right here, this just represents two electrons. So hey, if it helps you, let me just draw these out. Realize that it's just two electrons that are going up to form a lone pair on that oxygen, okay? But hey, we just abbreviate these two electrons by, by drawing this straight line to stand for it, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and draw what the resulting resonance structure would look like if we did this, okay? So it would look like this. Oh, and also a two plus charge on that nitrogen. All right, so the resulting resonance structure looks like this. The two electrons in the bond will have shifted onto this oxygen as a lone pair, which is what you see here. And hey, if you're still having trouble seeing how this line turns into these two dots, remember you guys, that this line just represents two electrons, okay? So hey, draw out those two electrons there instead of the line if it helps you to visualize it, okay? So hey, just the two electrons here are moving on top of this oxygen, which is how we got to this resonance structure right here, okay? But hey, anyways, if we put those electrons on that oxygen, this will result in a negative charge on the oxygen and a two plus charge on this nitrogen. And oh no, you guys, we have charges again. But this time, we at least have the negative on the most electronegative atom, the oxygen, right? And the, and the positive charge, excuse me, the positive charge on the least electronegative atom. So hey, that's good. All right, so the resulting resonance structure would look like this. All right, so the two electrons in the bond will have shifted onto the oxygen as a lone pair, which is what you see here, okay? And hey, if you're still having trouble seeing how this line turns into these two electrons, just remind yourself that this line, hey, it just stands for two electrons, right? So hey, go ahead and draw those electrons out if it helps you to visualize it, okay? Because hey, all that's happening is that these two electrons in this bond right here moved onto this oxygen as a lone pair, okay? But hey, anyways, if we put these electrons on this oxygen, this will result in a negative charge on the oxygen and a two plus charge on the nitrogen. And oh no, you guys, we have charges again. But hey, at least this time, we have the negative on the most electronegative atom, the oxygen, and the plus charge on the least electronegative atom, the nitrogen, right? So hey, that's good. But can anyone see anything really unstable about this resonance structure? Does it follow those four factors of stability we talked about? Okay, so it follows the putting the negative on the most electronegative atom thing, but what about the other three factors? Well, let's check, okay? So a factor number one was separation of charge. Separate like charges. And does our compound follow that? Not if you look at the nitrogen, right? So let's check this out. If you look at this nitrogen, you'll see a two plus charge here. This means that there are two positive charges. And if I drew these out, it would look like this. Two positive charges right next to each other. And is that stable or unstable? Really, really unstable, right, you guys? Okay, so hey, let's check factor number two, which says atoms are most stable with filled octets. Nitrogen here only has two, four, six electrons around it right here, right, violating this rule. So hey, what about factor number four? The more covalent bonds tend to be more stable. So if we compare the number of covalent bonds in this resonance structure with the original, we'll see that the original had one, two, three, four covalent bonds around that nitrogen, whereas this nitrogen only has one, two, three. 
Okay, so this residence structure started out looking good, but it ended up being pretty unstable itself, making it another minor contributor, okay? Another less stable residence structure. So, hey, how the heck do we get a major resonance structure? We tried moving electrons both ways to either make a bond or a lone pair, right? But we still couldn't get a stable resonance structure. So what's left to do? And the answer is the key to drawing major resonance structures. You don't move one pair of electrons without moving another. Let me say that again. You don't move one pair of electrons without moving another. When one pair of electrons moves, another pair gets up and moves somewhere else. So hey, check this out, you guys. Okay, so drawing resonance structures kind of reminds me of when you try to find a seat in a crowded cafeteria. Like when I was in elementary school, we'd go to the cafeteria, line up to get our food, pay, and then go find a seat with our tray of food, right? But hey, a lot of times there weren't any seats left. So in order for you to have a place to sit, you had to go kick someone out of their seat. So hey, let's do a quick demonstration to illustrate this. All right, you guys, so for this demonstration, my buddies Brian and Richard from high school are going to be helping me out. Say what's up, you guys. Uh, hey. <laughs> All right, cool. So, hey, for this demonstration, what I'm trying to illustrate to you is, is that for resonance structures, a good rule to follow is, is that whenever you want to move one pair of electrons, another pair of electrons has to move simultaneously. You can't have one pair of electrons sit down without having another pair of electrons stand up, okay? And, hey, this is exactly like if you're in a crowded cafeteria, okay? So, hey, go ahead and go eat, you guys. All right, so if you're in the cafeteria, Basically, you line up to get your food, you pay, and then you take your tray of food to go try to sit down someplace, right? But hey, in a crowded cafeteria, a lot of times there's no place to sit down, right? So if I want to have a place to sit so I can eat my meal, I got to kick someone else out of their seat. So hey, I'm going to go ahead and kick Brian out of his seat, so why don't you get up for a sec, Brian? So in order for me to sit down, Brian had to stand up, okay? But hey, Brian... Brian, he's not done eating his meal yet, right? So he still wants a place to sit down. So in order for him to have a place to sit, he's got to kick someone else out of their seat. So, hey, why don't you go kick Richard out of his seat? So in order for Brian to sit down, Richard has to get up at the same time, okay? And this is the same deal with resonance structures. Whenever you want to make a lone pair of electrons sit down to form a bond, then you have to make electrons in a bond stand up to form a lone pair, okay? So, hey, let's uh, illustrate this with Richard coming over one more time. And if Richard wants a place to sit, then I have to get up so he can sit down, giving him a place to sit, right? Okay, so this is the idea behind resonance, you guys. Keep this in mind when you're drawing resonance structures. Okay, so, hey, thanks a lot, you guys. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that little demonstration, you guys, because this is how drawing major resonance structures sort of works, all right? If you want to have a place to sit, you got to kick someone else out of their seat, right? This is the same with electrons. You can't move one pair of electrons without making another pair of electrons get up and move somewhere else. And hey, if it helps you, you can think about electrons being in one of two positions. Electrons can either be standing up or they can be sitting down. Electrons are standing up when they're lone pairs, okay? So check it out. These two dots, this lone pair, these are like feet. They're standing up looking for a place to sit. They want to sit down and turn into a bond. They want to sit down and have their lunch, right? Okay, so maybe I've been doing OCHEM for too long, but hey, serious, this helps some people. Hey, so electrons can either be standing up or sitting down. And electrons are sitting down when they're in bonds, when they're in multiple bonds like this. Imagine this when we're drawing out the structures, you guys. You'll see lone pair electrons sit down and become bonds, and you'll see electrons in bonds have to stand up and become lone pairs, all right? So, hey, to illustrate this, let me show you how to draw the major resonance structures for this guy, all right? So let me erase this bad resonance structure. All right, so since we already tried to manipulate this top oxygen electrons by itself and it didn't work out so well, let's try to move another set of electrons simultaneously, okay? So, hey, if we look at this oxygen on the left, it doesn't have any electrons in double bonds, right? But it's got lone pairs that we can move. Remember, your only options are turning lone pairs into bonds or turning bonds into lone pairs. You can either make electrons sit down to become bonds or stand up to become lone pairs, okay? So, hey, let's move this oxygen's lone pairs and form a bond to the nitrogen. And we designate that by drawing a curved arrow from any one of these lone pairs. I'm just going to pick this one, okay? So, hey, draw a curved arrow from this lone pair right smack in the middle between this oxygen and this nitrogen. 
And if you look closely, you can see oxygen's lone pairs sit down and become a bond. But uh oh, if we do that, check out what happens. So if we did that, the resulting resonance structure would look like this. With the new bond formed between this oxygen and this nitrogen, okay? And uh-oh, you guys, if we do that, that's putting five bonds around that nitrogen. That's two, four, six, eight, ten electrons around that nitrogen, violating the octet rule. And that happened because we let one pair of electrons sit down without another pair of electrons standing up. So hey, if we let these electrons sit down to become a bond, who's got to get up for them? Well, the only electrons we can move would be the electrons in this double bond, right? So let's move these electrons and turn these electrons from a bond into a lone pair. In other words, let's make these electrons who are sitting down in this bond stand up to make, a, to make room for other electrons who just sat down. And we designate this by having this double bond turn into a lone pair on that oxygen. And look what happens. If we simultaneously make this bond while breaking this bond, then this nitrogen will maintain having four bonds to it, and all atoms will still have octets, okay? So hey, let's draw out the resulting resonance structure if we have these bonds made and broken simultaneously. And it looked pretty similar to this. We just made this bond right here, but we're now going to be breaking this double bond. So this double bond is now going to move on top of this oxygen. So, or it's going to stand up as a lone pair on top of this oxygen and put a negative charge on it, okay? And cool, you guys, we just drew out our first major resonance structure. This guy follows all four factors of stability that we mentioned. Number one, like charges are separated by at least one atom. So this negative is separated from this negative by at least one atom, right, you guys? So, hey, like charges are separated by at least one atom. Number two, all atoms have octets. Each of these atoms have eight electrons. Number three, negatives are on the most oh, negatives on the, are on the most electronegative atoms. The plus charge on, is on the least electronegative atom, right? And hey, number four, we preserve the number of covalent bonds from the original from the original structure, right? And hey, this is sweet. We just drew our first major resonance structure. Congratulations. Okay, so hey, the last thing to do is just to check if there are any more resonance structures that we can draw. Well, let's see. We can have this lone pair that we just formed on this oxygen sit back down and make this bond, and then make these electrons in this bond that we just formed stand up to become lone pairs again. So like this. But hey, you guys, wouldn't that just bring us right back to our original structure? Yeah, right? So you don't need to draw out that again. So hey, let me erase these curved arrows, and let's see if there's another possibility. Well, okay, this oxygen hasn't gone to play yet, right? So let's see if he can do anything. And hey, he's got some lone pairs that we can work with, right? So hey, if we make one of these lone pairs sit down to form a bond between this nitrogen and this oxygen, then we have to make another pair of electrons stand up at the same time, right? So hey, if we make these electrons in a lone pair sit down to form a bond, what electrons can we make stand up? Well, hey, we've got electrons in a double bond right here. So hey, we can make these electrons stand up as a lone pair on this oxygen, okay? And we just did something similar to this when we drew our last resonance structure to get from here to here, right? So hey, if we do that, we can form a third major resonance structure. Let me draw that out for you right now. Oh, and don't forget your plus charge again. 